In the name of the Father, and of the Son, <coughs> and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, my dear faithful, we celebrate today the feast of St. John the Baptist. First class feast. One of the oldest feasts in the liturgy. And I would like to have a look to the Holy Scripture to see what are the, let's say, the main aspects of St. John the Baptist's life. You can see in the Gospel we have several parts of the Gospel talking about St. John the Baptist. But I would like to focus especially on three main aspects of his life. And the first one, this is the one that is summarized by these words when he saw our Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who taketh away the sin of the world. These words are like a summary of what is St. John the Baptist is the precursor, the forerunner of our law, the one who received this mission to announce Jesus, the mystery of Christ, that Jesus is everything, is the love of God, is the one bringing upon us the redemption, the salvation by his blood. So this is the main quote. If you want to know who is St. John the Baptist, this is the quote. The one by which he shows, you know, he signs out, he is the Son of God. This is this whole mission. And he will repeat it again and again, you know, talking about the Son, the importance of believing in the Son, in Jesus, who is the center of everything. The Father loveth the Son, and he hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth in the Son hath life everlasting, but he that believeth not in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So the message is very clear, my dear faithful. St. John the Baptist tells us, tells the church, tells the New Testament, because he is the link between the Old Testament and the New Testament. He is the last prophet. He's saying the world, he is the son of God. The one who believes, believes in him will get eternal life. The one who does not believe in him won't get eternal life. And you know, let's just make a stop, a pause. Because this main message of St. John the Baptist is absolutely essential for our times, my dear faithful. This quote I just, I just told you, you know, St. John chapter 3, verse 35. He that believeth in the Son hath life everlasting, but he that believeth not in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. With these few words, you have the rejection, condemnation of the false ecumenism that says that Jesus is not necessary. Jesus is optional. Yes, you can believe in Jesus, but you can also believe in other gods, other religions. It doesn't matter. In the end, every single religion, you know, conducts to God, a law to reach God. That's not true. And St. John the Baptist reminds us this truth, that Jesus is everything. He is the door. He's the door. Without him, we cannot reach heaven. He's the door of eternal life. And that was the mission of St. John the Baptist. And this little quote, you know, is the answer to all this nonsense of this false ecumenism we are hearing, we have been hearing for 60 years now. And that says that Jesus, yes, is important, but not necessary. He's absolutely necessary, my dear faithful. And this is very important for us to have a great faith, you know, in the necessity of our Lord. I remember when I was in South America, one day I was, um, it's a little detail, I was going to a concert, nice concert, 
classic concert, of course, uh, music, class, classic music. And um, I remember when we were waiting, you know, for the concert, I was visiting the, the theater, the th the Colon Theater is nice in Buenos Aires, and a lady was just doing the same, I guess, and she saw me with a classic, and said, oh, father, uh, glad to see you. And we started talking about, you know, religions, and, and she started telling to me, you know, in the end, I'm a Catholic, but I really believe that everyone can save his soul. It doesn't matter the religion he has. The important thing is being a good person. So I was telling her, I'm sorry, but not at all. Not at all. You need to believe in Jesus. Jesus is the way. He is the only one. Without Jesus, we cannot save our soul. And she said, but Father, I understand what you say. You are saying, but... I'm not sure that this is what the Pope is thinking. What could answer? answer? She was right. Unfortunately, she was right. Yeah. It's true that for now 60 years we have been hearing that you can follow the religion of your choice, more or less, because all religions have some seeds of the Holy Spirit. That means that all the religions, they conduct to, the, to, to God. And no. We cannot say that. Only Jesus is the source of eternal life. So this is the main message of St. John the Baptist. That sounds obvious, but it's not obvious anymore. So we need to remind it and be really convinced about it. Jesus is everything. He is the door. He is eternal life. And that was the mission of St. John the Baptist. He was the one, the first one, to show the world that Jesus is everything. Without him, no happiness in this world or in the other. So that's the first point. It was really the, 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 the announcer, the herald of Jesus' divinity and the necessity of believing in Jesus. Now another aspect of his life we can see is that he defended this truth again and again and even he had to pay with his life for defending the truth. Not only the truth in of the divinity of Jesus, but the truth of showing people what is the right path to God. And he preached that first to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees, they were coming to him. They were kind of jealous of his influence. And he said to them, seeing many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he was giving the baptism of penance, he said to them, ye broad of vipers, who hath should you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruit worthy of penance, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. For I tell you that God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. For now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree therefore that doth not yield good fruit shall be cut down and cast into the fire. I was strong, strong words. And he was giving us an example that sometimes we have to remind the truth even though it's not convenient, even sometimes with strong words, of course with diplomacy, and with charity, but we have to say the truth, like St. John the Baptist. And even though the price can be martyrdom, because he paid with his life saying the truth. Because he didn't only say the truth to the Pharisees, but also to the governor, to Herod. And he told Herod that he couldn't live with the wife of his brother. He was living in this situation. So he told him, it's not, allowed, it's not lawful for you to have her. And of course, Herod wasn't pleased, so he put him in the prison. And you remembered what happened. You remember what happened. And one day... For his birthday, you know, the, the daughter of Herodias, that was the woman he was living with, <coughs> the woman of his brother, danced in front of him and was so pleased that he told her, you can ask me whatever you want, I will give it to you. And she asked the mother, what should I ask? What, she, what did she say? The head of St. John the, Bas the, the, the Baptist in a basket. And he did it. Just cut the head of St. John the Baptist. 
So, saying the truth was his condemnation. And that's also a great example for us, my dear faithful, <clears throat> that reminds us that even though we have to be prudent, we have to be charitable, but sometimes we won't be able to avoid consequences for being Christians. And again, we have to be prudent, but let's be realistic. Sometimes we'll have to follow the example of St. John the Baptist and getting some bad consequences in our life, financially speaking, socially speaking, because we are Christian. That's, I would say, part of the Christian life. And we can ask ourselves, what gave St. John the Baptist this strength, you know, this unbreakable strength facing the adversity, his strength to preach the name of Jesus, even though he was facing his enemies. And that's the third point we can see in the gospel. Humility. He was humble, a very humble man. And we have two texts of the Holy Scripture showing us this disposition. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond the Jordan, to whom thou gavest testimony, behold, he baptizeth, and all men come to him. So, let's say the followers of John are telling him, you know, this man you showed as the Messiah, the Messiah is getting a lot of influence, and you're losing influence. They were concerned. What, is, what was the answer of John? A man cannot receive anything unless it be given him from heaven. You yourselves do bear with me, do bear me witness that I said that I am not Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who standeth and heareth him rejoiceth with joy because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Ah, that's beautiful, my dear faithful. That's a real sign of humility. The only thing that mattered for John was Jesus. For Jesus to be known, for Jesus to be followed, he didn't care about himself. Jesus was absolutely everything for him. And we have uh, this disposition of the soul of St. John the Baptist also, in St. John chapter 1. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent from Jerusalem priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who art thou? For this time, these are not followers anymore. These are enemies. And he confessed, and he did not deny. And he confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I'm not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. They said therefore unto him, Who art thou that we may give, give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? That's very interesting. What will he answer? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. A voice. Almost nothing, just a sound. Not even someone. I'm a sound. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. And they that were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said to him, Why then dost thou baptize, if thou be, more, be not Christ, nor Elias, nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there hath stood one in the midst of you whom you not know. The same is he that shall come after me, who is preferred before me the latchet of whose shoe I am not worthy to lose. And they understood the message because in the Old Testament, the one who was, you know, uh, losing the latchet was the slave, the servant. It was the one who was doing that. He's saying, I'm not even worthy to be called the servant, the slave of Jesus. I'm nothing. And this is, you know, very important for us. Because that shows us what is the disposition we need to have if we want to be really faithful 
to Jesus and to the predication, the preaching of the faith. Humility, my dear faithful. Humility. This is vital. This is really the, the sign of true holiness. The sign of truth. As it. If we are humble, if we are preaching the truth with humility, that we are nothing. And it doesn't matter to, you know, to get people attached to our person. No, the only thing that matters is getting people attached to Jesus. This is what matters. This is what mattered for St. John the Baptist. So let's ask him. Let's ask him this grace. His example is very, very actual. Very for our days. I would say we have the, the answer to the crisis of the church in these three points. What do we need to do today to solve the problem of the church? Preaching Jesus has the only way to reach heaven. That he is necessary. And preaching him again and again, even though that can provoke, cause some evil for us. Like St. John the Baptist, with perseverance. But above all, preaching him with humility. So many times we can see people, they have good, great faith, but not humility. They preach with pride. With pride. I have the truth. No, this is not the way of preaching. The way of preaching is showing everyone that he is the truth. We are nothing. He is the truth. And this is really... The, the condition for our perseverance. So, my dear faithful, let's ask St. John the Baptist a great humility that will allow us to preach Jesus until the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.